Um, so we are going through all of Wilds of Eldraine, color by color, uh, reviewing the whole thing. We've done all of the single colors, white, blue, black, red, green, and now we're on to gold cards. There are a handful of cards in here that are seemingly single color identity, but because they have an adventure on them that is a different color, uh, their color identity is multicolored. So they have all wound up in the gold folder for this particular video. Um, but when we get to those, I'll kind of re-explain what I'm talking about. And if you are just starting with this video, don't worry, I'm going to explain all of the set mechanics as we reach them in every particular video so that you don't have to start at white in order to get all of the information. We're going to talk through everything uh, piece by piece and we will see where we shake out in the end. Um, I will hand you as much information in each of these videos as I possibly can and we'll make some comments on these particular cards. Where? Reyes, what are you doing? Get out of there. Um, yeah, so let's start with the gold cards. Agatha of the Vile Cauldron is first. This is our big bad of the set. Uh, one of them, I guess. This is the Wicked Witch in the Hut. Uh, Agatha is one gr one red, one green for a 1-1 one, one human warlock legendary creature. Our activated abilities of creatures you control cost X less to activate where X is Agatha of the Vile Cauldron's power. This effect can't reduce the mana value of that cost to less than one. Uh, and then it has an activated ability of four red, green, other creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample and haste until end of turn. So this is super aggro. The nice thing is, is that Agatha's um, passive ability can make the activated ability cheaper. So you can get it all the way down to one red, green, if you manage to get Agatha up in power, uh, which is really strong. I think this is a good card. Obviously, it's mythic. Um, it looks like a good card. It is a good card, uh, but it's easy to kill. I would definitely suggest killing this immediately if your opponent plays it. What a weirdo. Uh, next up is The Apprentice's Folly. So obviously, Eldraine is a storybook universe. Um, so having sagas in this set makes a lot of sense. There's also been a big trend of having sagas in every set recently. So I think that we're just at the point where the sagas are going to stick around and be just an evergreen card type. Uh, the Apprentice's Folly is two blue red for an enchantment saga. Chapter one, choose target non-token creature you control that doesn't have the same name as a token you control. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it isn't legendary, is a reflection in its addition to its other types, and has haste. So you can uh, copy something you own. It has haste right away, so you can attack with it. And then chapter two, you can do that again, but you have to pick a different uh target because you can only target something that doesn't already have a copy and then chapter three unfortunately you have to sacrifice all the reflections you own so you lose both of those tokens that you created but hopefully you've been able to get as much value as possible out of them uh it's a pretty good card let's say that ash party crasher is next it's a one red one white uh for a two two human peasant legendary creature with haste it has celebration so celebration is kind of like constellation um in order to trigger celebration you have to have two or more non-land permanents enter the battlefield under your control this turn um ash says whenever ash uh, attacks if you've triggered constellation put a one one counter on ash so if you're able to continuously add uh permanence non-land permanence to the battlefield and you can continuously attack with ash they're just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger so um a seemingly innocuous card that can get really big and scary ariette of the charmed apple this is the poster child for this set uh ariette is the wicked witch 
Uh, she is one white and a black for a 2-4 human warlock legendary creature. Each opponent, or sorry, each creature that's enchanted by an aura you control can't attack you or planeswalkers you control. At the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is the number of auras you control. So the more things you can put like rolls on um, or other curses, stuff like that. This is the the new curse commander for sure. Um, obviously, it will drain your opponents depending on how many auras you control. I think this is going to be really fun to build a commander deck around. Uh, the next card we have is Fawn's Bane Troll. Two black green for a 4-4 troll. When Fawn's Bane Troll enters the battlefield, create a monster roll token attached to it. So rolls are a new mechanic in Wilds of Eldraine. They are enchantment tokens. They are auras, and you attach them to creatures. There are six of them in total. Five of them are positive, and one of them is negative. The monster roll in particular reads, Enchanted Creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. So it's obviously a positive one. Um... Then you can pay one to sacrifice an aura attached to Fawn's Bane Troll, which, if you've chosen it as its ETB trigger resolves, uh, you already have one ready to go. Uh, you sacrifice an aura attached to Fawn's Bane Troll, and Fawn's Bane, Fawn's Bane Troll fights target creature you don't control. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead, and you can only activate this as a sorcery. Um, so... You can use that sacrifice ability to trigger a fight. But remember, a fight is combat damage from both sides. So keep that in mind. Don't just throw your Fawn's main troll away. Uh, next up is this hideous monstrosity. Luckily, it's not a Canada goose. Otherwise, it would be way more terrifying for us Canadians. But uh, the goose mother is X green blue for a 2-2 bird hydra. Two words I never wanted to see in combination with one another. Um, it has flying. The Goose Mother enters the battlefield with X11 counters on it, which is very much a Hydra ability. And then the Goose Mother enters the battlefield, create half X food tokens rounded up. So it has that Goose ability. And then whenever the Goose Mother attacks, you may sacrifice a food if you do draw a card. Um, it's pretty okay. It's not astounding or anything but it, it's pretty decent uh next up we have greta sweet tooth scourge obviously playing on the hansel and gretel um kind of story greta is one black green for a three three human warrior when greta sweet tooth scourge enters the battlefield create a food token you can pay green sacrifice a food put a one one counter on target creature or you can pay one and a black, sacrifice a food, draw a card, and lose a life. Uh, so this is a lot of value for three mana. I think this card is fantastic. Next up, we have Hilda the Icy Crown. Um, the not Elsa character from Wilds of Eldraine. Uh, she is two white blue for a three four human warlock legendary creature. Whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, you may pay one. When you do, choose one. So white and blue has a tap opponent's stuff archetype. Um, a lot of these dual color cards just kind of give you an idea of what the archetypes are. Green, black is food. Um, white, black is auras or curses. Red, green is aggro. Um, white, blue is tap things. Blue, red is spells, yada, yada. Black, red is rats. Um, so whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, you may pay one. When you do, choose one. Either create a 4-4 white and blue elemental creature token or put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control or scry to, then draw a card. Very powerful. Um, if you're able to trigger those taps, um, it's very good. Then we have Johan, Apprentice Sorcerer. Two blue red for a two five human warrior legendary creature. You may look at the top card of your library anytime, and once each turn, you may cast an instant or sorcery spell from the top of your library. This is obviously playing into that red blue spells slinger deck. Um, it's pretty good. 
Likeness Looter is next. This is Black Blue, which is the fairy archetype. Um, fairy Shapeshifter. It's a 1-1 one, one with flying. You can tap it to loot, so you draw a card, discard a card. It is Likeness Looter at the end of the day. Um, and then you could pay X. Likeness Looter becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with van mana value X, except it has flying and this ability activate only as a sorcery. So this is kind of like um, some of those Lazav cards, um, the black, blue kind of clone ability stuff. The only problem is, is that this doesn't change the name. It doesn't keep the name likeness looter uh so it becomes the name of whatever card you're copying uh so you cannot get away with copying having multiple copies of a legendary card on the battlefield but it's still pretty cool i think this card is neat uh then we've got neva stalked by nightmares two white black for a two two human noble with menace when neva uh enters the battlefield return target creature or enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand and then whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Neva and scry one. Uh, pretty good. Again, black-white is the aura curse archetype, so that plays really well. And then jumping back to the fairy archetype, Obira Dreaming Duelist is one blue, one black for a 2-2 fairy warrior with flash and flying. Whenever another fairy enters the battlefield under, under your control, each opponent loses a life. So that's pretty good. Fairies are generally pretty cheap. There's ways to make fairy tokens. So you're going to be triggering that uh, each opponent loses a life pretty often. And the art is astounding. I just love the colors, the blues and the purples in this on all the fairy arts. It's just great. Okay, next up we have one of the two twins, Rowan Scion of War. What have they been up to since the invasion? Um, unfortunately, Rowan has become the Scion of War. They are no longer a planeswalker. You can see the desparked logo um, behind the text there. Uh, so they're just a normal person again. Rowan is one black red for a 4 2 human wizard with menace. You can tap Rowan. Spells you cast this turn that are black and or red cost X, X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you've lost this turn. Activate only only as a sorcery. So this is pretty powerful. Um, and can really make something cheaper every turn, especially if you leave this up. And maybe you think twice about blocking your opponent's attacks because you want to trigger Rowan uh, to make something extremely cheap. So it depends. I think it's very powerful. Um, the next card is Ruby Daring Tracker. So this is red green, which is pretty aggro. Uh, it's a one two human scout with haste. Whenever Ruby Daring Tracker attacks, while you control a creature with power four or greater, Ruby gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. And then you can tap Ruby to add one red or one green mana. Uh, good card. I like all of these uncommon legendaries in these sets really play into the uh, archetype of those two colors. So I like that they're all, I think they've all been two mana so far. Uh, actually, no, Neva has been cheaper and johan has been more expensive but like ash and um greta and johan and ruby they're all like uncommon legendaries in these specific archetypes uh, the next card we have is the white blue uncommon legendary this is, again, tapping is the archetype. Tap your opponent's stuff. Sheree of the Numbing Depths is two white blue for a 2-3 merfolk wizard. Whenever Sheree enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls and put a stun counter on them. Whenever you tap one or more untapped creatures your opponent's control, draw a card. This only triggers once each turn. 
Um, so again, just leaning into that tap your opponent's stuff. This nightmarish mermaid uh, merfolk art and aesthetic is super cool. I love it so much. Um, now, now we've got the Selesnia uncommon hero, Sir Armand the Redeemer. Three green white for a 4-4 four, four human knight. When Sir Armand enters the battlefield, create a monster roll token, attach it to a target creature you control, and then all enchanted creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Obviously, white, green is the enchantment archetype. Um, and to remind you, monster roll is one of the new enchantment tokens. Uh, monster specifically reads enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has trample. So it's pretty good. Uh, then we get to the mythic um, Demir champion, Talion the Kindly Lord. is two blue black for a 3-4 fairy noble with flying. As Talion enters the battlefield, choose a number between 1 and 10. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value, power, or toughness equal to the chosen number, that player loses two life and you draw a card. So obviously... Being able to look at your opponent's hand before you cast Talion is going to be really strong. And there's a Thought Seize variant that plays in the no in the fairy deck uh, that is in this set, so you will be able to do that. Next up is Tottentans Swarm Piper. Uh, Red Black is the Rats archetype, so Tottentans is the uh, Pied Piper, for lack of a better word. They are one black red for a 2-3 human warlock bard. Whenever Tottentans or another non-token creature you control dies, create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token that can't block. And then you can pay one and a black target attacking rat you control gains death touch until end of turn. Uh, pretty strong, very strong in the rats deck, obviously. You'd be able to, um, you know, turn that one rat up a notch and then make a bunch of rats. Uh, I think it's pretty good. All of these um, uncommon legendaries are actually pretty strong, and I like them a lot. Troyan, the Gutsy Explorer. This is the Simic, um, you know, cast five or greater archetype. They are one green blue for a 1-3 Vidalcan Scout. You can tap it to add blue and green mana. Spend this mana only to cast spells with mana value five or greater or spells with X in their mana cost. And then you can pay blue to tap it to draw a card and discard a card. So the looting effect is very strong as well. Um, I like it quite a bit. Uh, then there's the other twin, Will, the Scion of Peace. So Will is basically the opposite of Rowan. Um, one is the Scion of War, the other is the Scion of Peace. They're polar opposites. Will is one green... Oh, one green, one white, blue for a 2-4 human wizard with vigilance. And then it has the same activated ability but opposite as Rowan. So spells you cast this turn are that are white and blue, white and or blue, cost X less to cast where X is the amount of life you've gained this turn instead of lost. Um, so it's really neat. The design is really cool. I like it quite a bit. Next up, we've got Yenna, the Red Tooth Regent. Uh, two green white for a 4-4 four, four elf noble. Um, you could pay two tap Yenna. Choose target enchantment you control that doesn't have the same name as another permanent you control. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it isn't legendary. If the token is an aura, untap Yenna, uh, then scry to activate only as a sorcery. Um, so you can, if you have the mana for it, you can continuously um, make copies of token auras that you have or just normal auras that you have it's very powerful uh, next up we have Baluna Grand Squall um, green blue red for a 4-4 giant noble with trample and permanent spells you cast that have an adventure cost cast or co have an adventure cost one less to cast so you get a little discount on cards with adventure and then uh, she herself has an adventure attached to it called Seek Thrills. Two green, blue, red for an instant. Mill seven cards. Then put all cards that have an adventure from them uh, into your hand. So this is a cool card. It's mostly a commander card. 
Um, but a 4-4 four, four for 3 mana, if you manage to get mana fixing in limited, this is pretty decent. Um, I don't think this is going to see much constructed play, but it's it's cool. Uh, now we're getting to the adventure, the split adventure cards. So all of these cards have a base color, but they're also multicolored cards because their color identity includes the adventure color. Um, so if you're wondering why these are in the gold video slash folder, uh, that is why. So Callus Cellsword is one and a black for a 2-2 human soldier. Callus Cellsword enters the battlefield with a 1-1 counter on it for each creature that died under your control this turn. And then it has an adventure called Burn Together. At sorcery speed, target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to any other target, then sacrifice it. So automatically, if you cast the adventure before you cast the soldier, um, you get to have that extra 1-1 one, one counter on it because you have to sacrifice uh, the creature you use. Uh, then we've got Cruel Somnophage, which is one of my favorite cards in this entire set because it does everything I want to do in Magic. Um, Cruel Somnophage is one in a black for a Star Star Nightmare. Cruel Somnophage's power and toughness are equal to the number of creature cards in all graveyards. So even if you're not playing a creature heavy deck, Cruel Somnophage can still get really big. Um, it has an adventure attached to it called Can't Wake Up. Won't wake up. Evanescence. Uh, praise the Evanescence gods. Um, it is a sorcery for one and a blue. Target player mills four cards. So you're hoping to trigger the adventure on your turn get some creatures in your opponent's graveyard or even your graveyard if you're into that thing and then uh once you play cruel summon of age it will have higher power and toughness thanks to milling in the previous turn then we've got decadent dragon which is very interesting card uh two red red for a four four dragon with flying and trample already it's a bonkers value Whenever Decadent Dragon attacks, create a treasure token, insane value. And then it also has an adventure attached to it called Expensive Taste. For two and a black, you get an instant, exile the top two cards of your opponent's library face down. You may look at and play those cards for as long as they remained exiled. Um, notably, you do not get to cast them using mana of any color, which is why the dragon itself makes treasure tokens so that you can sacrifice those treasures to uh, make that specific color that you need um, but this is just so much value on one card um, it has a really good reason to cast it on turn three using expensive taste or you cast this on your opponent's end step and then you can cast decadent dragon on your upkeep or after your upkeep on your turn and then it doesn't have haste so you can't attack with it right away but it's just like oozing with value this card has so much value it's weird that this red black actually all of these so far all of these dual color adventure cards they don't really fit specifically into their color archetypes they're just really powerful on their own so intriguing uh devouring sugar maw is next it's two black black for a 6-6 six, six horror with menace and trample at the beginning of your upkeep you may sacrifice an artifact enchantment or token if you don't tap devouring sugar maw so you have to keep sacrificing stuff to keep it untapped and then uh, it has an adventure called have for dinner for one and a white it's an instant create a one one white human creature token and a food token um so luckily the adventure side of this card gifts you with two ways to untap or keep devouring sugar malt untapped um so very interesting then elusive otter which is one of my votes for the best art in this whole set elusive otter is one blue for a one one otter with prowess so whenever you cast a non-creature spell uh this creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn and then creatures with power less than elusive otter's power can't block it and then it has an adventure called Grove's Bounty. For X and a green, it's a sorcery. Distribute X 1-1 one, one counters among any number of target creatures you control. So distributing those counters, doing that, um, 
doing that blue green thing. And then we've got another otter, Rollicking Familiar. Two and a blue for a 2 2 otter wizard with flying. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, uh, Frolicking Familiar gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So it's kind of like prowess, but it wants you to cast instants and sorceries, not other stuff. Um, and then it has a an adventure called Blow Off Steam for one red mana. Blow Off Steam deals one damage to any target. Um, again, really strong. Doing that red blue spells thing. Gingerbread Hunter is next. This art terrifies me because based on the size of the giant, these gingerbread men have to be like human sized. And I did not picture any of the gingerbread men in this set as like people sized because these gingerbread heads are huge. Um, so gingerbread hunter is four and a green for a five, five giant with when gingerbread hunter enters the battlefield, create a food token. Okay. So this one's doing the black green thing. The last couple have done the color pair archetype thing. Um, and then it has an adventure on it called puny snack for two and a black. You get an instant target creature gets minus two, minus two until end of turn. You get to kill something small of your opponents and then play this and get a food token. Uh, I like it. Heart flame duelist is next one on a white for a three, one human knight. Instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink, which is huge. They haven't done that in forever. Bringing that back is really powerful. It has an, an adventure called Heart Flame Slash. Two and a red for an instant. Heart Flame Slash deals three damage to any target. Um, obviously, these cards don't work with themselves very much. So having multiple copies of these cards is kind of the way that they're designed. You already want a Heart Flame Duelist out when you cast the Heart Flame Slash. Um, so you have to have multiple copies of these cards in your deck. Um, so they're not really designed to be super useful in um, limited formats, but in constructed formats, they're very powerful. Immodane's Recruiter is next. It's two and a red for a 2-2 two -two Human Knight. When Immodane's Recruiter enters the battlefield, create creatures you control, get plus one, plus oh, and gain haste until end of turn. Uh, it also has an adventure called Train Troops. Four and a white for a sorcery. Create two, two, create two, two, two white human, white knight creature tokens with vigilance. So that's pretty cool. Uh, next up is Kellen the Fey Blooded. Two and a red for a two, two human fairy with double strike. Other creatures you control get plus one plus O oh for each aura and equipment attached to Kellen the Fey Blooded. So this is really cool because it spreads. If you're doing the um, Voltron thing where you're putting everything onto one creature, this is spreading that love by giving all of your other creatures a bounty uh, for all of the auras and equipments attached to Kellen. And then it has an adventure on it called Birthright Boon. For one and a white, it's a sorcery. Search your library for an aura or an equipment card. Uh, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Uh, so that's really good. Sets you up. Then we've got Mosswood, Dread Knight. God, these guys are so cool. Um, one and a green for a 3-2 human knight. I love all of these court um, wood knights. They're so neat. Um Human Knight, it has Trample. When Mosswood Dread Knight dies, you may recast it from your graveyard as an adventure until the end of your next turn. Um, and its adventure is called Dread Whispers. It's one in a black for a sorcery. You draw a card and lose a life. Um, so you can cast the adventure and then cast the Mosswood Dread Knight. And then when it dies, you can cast it uh, uh, the adventure again, um, which is cool. You can kind of just continuously cast it, right? Because if you cast the adventure after it dies, then it goes into exile. And then you can cast the creature again. But you only have one turn to do it. So that's pretty neat. Uh, Picnic Ruiner is next. One in a green for a 2-2 Goblin Rogue. It kind of looks like they're wearing this basket as like an outfit. But I think it's just the angle of the drawing. 
Uh, whenever Picnic Ruiner attacks while you control a creature with power four or greater, Picnic Ruiner gains double strike until end of turn. And then it has an adventure called Stolen Goodies. Three and a green for a sorcery. Distribute three 1-1 one, one counters among any number of target creatures you control. So you can put it all on one so that you have enough power to trigger its triggered ability. Um, pretty cool. Pollen Shield Hair. One and a white for a 2-2 two, two rabbit. Creature tokens you control get plus one, plus one. Then it has Hair Raising, which is one green for a sorcery. Target creature you control gains vigilance and gets plus X plus X until the end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. Uh, interesting. It's definitely uh, more of a humans go wide deck uh, card than, say, the enchantment decks, which is the other popular white green combo. So it's very interesting. Next up, we have questing druid i almost said questing beast it does have questing beast on its staff head though so bringing it back uh questing druid is one in a green for a one one human druid with whenever you cast a spell that's white blue black or red put a one one counter on questing druid and then it has an adventure that's called seek the beast one in a red for an instant exile up to two Exile the top two cards of your library until your next end step. You may play those cards. Uh, interesting. Not bad. Then we've got uh, Scalding Viper. One in a red for a 2-1 Elemental Snake. Whenever an opponent casts a spell with mana value 3 or less, Scalding Viper deals 1 damage to that player. That's pretty good. And then Steam Clean is its adventure side. One in a blue for a sorcery. Return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Uh, that's pretty cool. You get to bounce something. And then if you bounce something that's mana value 3 or less and then play Scalding Viper, then your opponent has to think twice about casting it. I like that. Uh, Shrouded Shepherd is next. Also very cool art. Uh, one in a white for a 2-2 Spirit Warrior. When Shrouded Shepherd enters the battlefield, target creature uh, you control gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. I like that. Then it has an adventure called Cleave Shadows. For one in a black, it's a sorcery. Creatures your opponents control get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So that's pretty decent too. All creatures your opponents control. Uh, Spell Scorn Coven is next. Three in a black for a 2-3 fairy warlock with flying. When Spell Scorn Scorn Coven 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 When Spell Scorn Coven enters the battlefield each opponent discards a card and then it has an adventure called take it back two in a blue for an instant return target spell to its owner's hand uh that's pretty great because you can return instant sorceries enchantment anything um it's not really a counter spell it's more of a bounce activated spell on the stack um so i like that a lot and then hopefully when you play spell scorn coven uh it has to discard the card you just bounced because maybe that's the only one it has left or something uh tempest heart is next three and a green for a three four elemental elk with trample whenever you cast a spell with mana value five or greater put a one one counter on tempest heart so again that simic archetype is cast things that are five or greater and then it has an adventure called scan the clouds it's one in a blue for an instant. Draw two cards, then discard two cards. So that's pretty good. You can set yourself up to have things in your hand that are mana value five or greater. Uh, next up, we have Thread Bind Click. It's three and a blue for a 3-3 three, three fairy with flying. It has an adventure called Rip the Seams. Two and a white for an instant. Destroy target tapped creature. That's pretty powerful. This is... A really great blue-white uh, control card. Uh, next up, we have Twinning Twins. Two blue-blue for a 4-4 four, four Fairy Wizard with Flying, Vigilance, and Ward 1. That's very good. It has an adventure called Swift Spiral for one and a white. It's an instant exile target non-token creature. Return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So you get to blink something uh preferably your thing probably and then the last gold card we have is Mo woodland acolyte 
It's two and a white for a 2-2 human cleric. When Woodland Acolyte enters the battlefield, draw a card. And it has an instant adventure called Mend the Wilds. Put target permanent card from your graveyard on top of your library. So you get to bring something out of your graveyard. And then when you play Woodland Acolyte, you get to draw that card that you just put there. Uh, that's pretty good. I think out of all these multicolor adventure cards, um, obviously I like Cruel Somnophage the most. Because that's just my kind of card but i think i like mosswood dread knight it's just like this undying knight as long as you continuously draw a card and lose a life um i think that's really really cool yep and then obviously like all of the legendary creatures and and stuff is really neat i like greta sweet tooth scourge because i think i'm going to be playing a lot of black green in this set um I've been really enjoying playing green lately. So as I know that I'm a blue black player by reputation, um, but I've been really enjoying playing green. Uh, so I think I'm going to focus on building some fun Golgari decks or mono green decks with this set. Obviously adding the black in there makes this food thing very viable. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, that's it for the gold cards. Uh, thank you so much for watching this. If you're on YouTube later, uh, leave a comment below. Tell me which of these cards you're most excited about. Tell me which one I've undervalued or overvalued. Uh, let's just talk magic. I, I love talking magic with you guys. Um, if you can and you did like this video, I would love it if you could hit like um, and maybe even subscribe to the channel. Those things really help us get seen by more people and you know our videos are progressively getting more and more attention. So it's always helpful when folks uh, comment or like things or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate the heck out of you. Uh, we're just going to take a short break and then we're going to look at the artifacts and lands, which is admittedly short, but uh, I wanted to keep them separate. So that we're not bombarding people with too much stuff in one video. So thank you so much. Feel free to watch any of the other videos on the channel. Um, I will have a link to the playlist that features all of the Wilds of Eldraine set reviews uh, next to me over there somewhere. Um, so definitely say hi, check that out. 